Chapter 2 of The House with the Twisting Passage by Marion St. John Webb This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to find out how you can volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Zanusha the House with the Twisting Passage by Marion St. John Webb Chapter 2 Jenny's Miss Clare The following day Jenny had another game with Miss Clare, and began to feel as if she had known her all her life. She was absorbed with this new playmate of hers, and ran past Miss Ruby's door and Mr. Snatcher's door, without giving either of them a thought. Then Jenny made one or two discoveries about Miss Clare, which made her seem more real than ever. One afternoon, when Aunt Abby had gone to sleep on the sofa, Jenny crept upstairs, and, against the rules, searched the upper floors until she found the old nursery at the top. And here, after much quiet rummaging about, she found in a cupboard the doll, actually the same doll that Miss Clare was holding in her arms in the picture. To make quite sure, Jenny carried it carefully down into the passage and compared it with the pictured doll. Yes, it was the same, no doubt about it, though it looked older and more knocked about than the one Miss Clare was holding. Jenny gazed down into the doll's staring eyes and thought they looked pathetic and lonely. So after this she would often creep away when Aunt Abby was not looking and steal into the old nursery and nurse the doll for a few minutes and talk to it, saying that Miss Clare hadn't forgotten it and would come home again soon. Hidden away in the nursery, she also found a pair of Miss Clare's little black slippers. They were too small for Jenny. She knew because she tried to put them on. Another discovery was a torn exercise book with Miss Clare's name on the cover, written in large, straggling handwriting. And this disclosed to Jenny the secret that Miss Clare couldn't add up very well and didn't know what nine times six was, which made her all the more dear to Jenny's heart. And so Jenny dreamed and weaved stories about her Miss Clare, inventing all sorts of things about her manners, and likes and dislikes, until she really felt she knew Miss Clare as well as she knew herself. On fine days she would take Miss Clare out into the garden, and they would take it in turns to have swings in the orchard. After having a swing herself, Jenny would get solemnly off, and, lifting up the imaginary Miss Clare, who, she always pretended, was a little smaller than herself, she would place her on the seat and stand and push the swing to and fro until Miss Clare had had a good swing and it was Jenny's turn again. On wet days she and Miss Clare stayed indoors and played house or hide-and-seek along the passages. Well, I must say the child isn't much trouble, Aunt Abby would remark to Uncle Nickel. However she manages to amuse herself in those empty passages I can't imagine. Just listen to her now, running up and down and laughing. I never played with nothing like that when I was a child. End of chapter 2